Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Julia Hackwender. I started my PhD last September at Open GeoHub and Wageningen University. So I'm still writing my proposals. So also what I will present to you is basically work in progress and I also highly appreciate any feedback you have for me. My topic is mapping land potential and tracking land degradation using Earth observation data. The background for this is SDG indicator 15.3.1, which is the proportion of land over the total, uh, that is degraded over the total land area. And into this feeds the Land Degradation Neutrality Initiative by UNCCD, which aims at avoiding, reducing, and reversing land degradation. Now, how do we measure land degradation? So for that, we need a reference. And what is commonly taken as a reference are like the last few years as a baseline, so uh, usually the last 15 years are taken, or the immediate surrounding is taken as a reference. But um, like you can see on this uh, example graph, maybe if we only go a few years back, we don't capture the full potential of that land. Um, so what uh, if we could actually map the natural land potential and use that as the reference for land degradation? So one of my uh, goals for this research is to model potential primary productivity. Primary productivity is basically the amount of carbon assimilated by plants, and it can be represented by uh, FAPAR, the fraction of absorbed photosynthetic radiation. And we want to mo uh, model the gap between actual and potential natural primary productivity. Uh, the idea for that is to uh, train a machine learning model and to use protected natural areas as a training points for that. Going one step further, uh, we have this idea to also model historic primary productivity. Like uh, as mentioned here, maybe you go a few years back, but you don't capture the full potential. So what if we could back, go back even further? So that's a bit also we still have to figure out how far can we go back? Can we go back to pre-industrial times actually? Um, so the idea is also here to build a model using land use, climate, and human pressure. And maybe also you have ideas for data sets that could be possibly used or idea for methods. Um, I highly appreciate any uh, comments on that. Um, going one step further, we want to model gross primary productivity, which is a more quantifiable measure of land degradation as it comes in gram carbon. And we want to model it at high resolution to be able to identify small scale processes we might miss out on otherwise. For that, we want to compare different methods. So I will compare light use efficiency models with machine learning models and also feed then the outputs of uh, light use efficiency models into the machine learning model to follow a hybrid approach. Um, yeah, and lastly, I want to look at ecosystem resilience. So which ecosystems are least resilient and which are losing resilience fastest? For that, I want to do a trend analysis of the primary productivity time series we create, looking at abrupt and gradual changes, and uh, calculating the resilience um, to those uh, from, of different ecosystems, and that will be based on specific metrics that are usually used for that, that can be like the recovery rate or the uh, degree to which uh, the state returns. Um, yeah, so my project is uh, part of Open Earth Monitor. That's where the money comes from. Um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Julia. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, good luck <laughs> with, uh, with this. So, it looks like it's a big beginning step. So, uh, if there are any feedbacks um, for her, you can take. Yeah, maybe. Yes. When I hold the micro, <laughs> so you are going to use the um, um, let's say the machine learning algorithm to predict the GPP, right? Yeah. And then uh, you want to compare with a uh, different uh, approaches. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but then sometimes maybe the input data you're using could be um, how to say kind of correlated with the input data used by other algorithms, right? Um, you know what? Uh, yeah. Lose the flux set points of the actual measurements of GPP on the ground. But let us also Fluscon is using. Uh, Fluscon, one of the data sets that you showed uh, by Martin Jun, 
right? They are also using FlexNet data. They are using uh, uh, machine learning. Can you compare all the methods that uh, independently build from the FlexNet. So only the methods that are independent of the FlexNet, so it's a really fair comparison. Okay. Then like you don't have much data to use. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, 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 if you see the formula, you use the F part from Modis of the Copernicus um, and then you um, this, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, LUI. So you the light is sufficient. So you have a few things, uh, but, uh, but uh, mainly Earth observation and then calibrate. Probably only the flux net is not tropics, I mean it's underrepresented. So if any result we get we'll actually won't we won't know about the accuracy in tropics, I think. That's uh yeah, yeah, that's especially true. especially tropics I think they're really not in flux net really. So but if they put new stations then we can recompute this model and with space time. So as soon as there's new stations we just add them and and then we fix predictions for the whole space time cube. So that's the idea. Maybe one quick question. You plan to do it globally, right? That's the idea. So after developing the methodology, you will, you will run it at the global scale. So um, the plan for my part of the research is to compare the methods with each other and then to apply to sample regions. Sample regions. OK. Yes. Yeah, okay. But, but we're mapping the whole world at 30 meter space time for the last 25 years. So it's massive data. OK. Yeah. OK. Yeah. That's for another project of open Yeah, Geo. okay, that's, uh, that's the Open Earth Monitor project, right? So, okay, you will... You will we could do it monthly also. These things we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. If he wants to do it at 30 minutes, one kilometer globus. Okay, and wow. we want to do it 30 meter monthly? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a Yeah, it's a bit more ambitious. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is... Uh, because we have online participants. To, to, to each other, because the process that is considered is photosynthesis. You can do it with light use efficiency, or you can use a physical model, model that EJ introduced. We, we plan to use that. The idea is that uh, once you uh, have all these four things, you should be able to come up with a more efficient algorithm to do that, uh, random forest or whatever, something else maybe. But then the key point is really, given the noise in all this data, given the different uh, type of uh, vegetation ecosystems, you still need to have a consistent way to do global scale. This is uh, basically a kind of prediction because you have only a few, few points to train your data afterwards. You have to really do it elsewhere in Africa, tropical forest, whatsoever. And that is actually a real challenge. So from a research point of view, it's very interesting, but uh, this is not a land use classification. It doesn't change too quickly. The fluxes change every half an hour or every, every moment whereby radiation is changing, whereby other wind and the temperature is changing. So you, you, you need to realize that. But Lina yeah. didn't yeah. show, but she actually uh, with the MODIS, right? Uh, yeah, you overlay uh, with the EVI and what was the R square you got, the cross validation? Oh, I, don't. I don't have it in my head. But it was, was 0 0.8 or something, so yeah, yeah. it was high. So um, it's definitely better than we expected already with the MODIS and we think when you go to Landsat, I think you can push it accuracy. Because, you know, the today's vegetation is very patchy, you know, like you have a, you know, if you look at the land use cropping systems and, you know, it's very patchy and also even ur urban areas are small, you know, so if you put them in a one, if you do a one kilometer pixel, you have all these mixels, you know, like 80% will be mixels and then you're mixing GPP from different. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll keep you posted. It's very exciting, of course, and we need to have it ready by end of the year, right, Landra? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we, we found another topic to discuss during drinks, so that, that's nice. So there is progress. Thank you very much, Julia, for, for your nice presentation. <laughs>